food pyramid. We have basic nutrition guidelines here that allow you to make better choices, better choices for your long-term health. Um, what we've got is a question mark at the bottom. We're gonna make sure you understand that by the end of all of this. Then we have caloric balance, which was that classic uh, expression of calories in versus calories out, dictates your overall body weight. Uh, and then next, if we try to go in a little bit deeper of what's really important when it comes to making decisions about food, food quality is uh, something that most people are aware of being important, but don't actually have a, a system to think about whether or not this is a good idea for them to eat or not. Okay, so we have three different things that we're focused on here. Sourcing of that calorie, that food, where it came from, right? How you prepare that calorie, and then how you ingest slash digest that food. Okay, so starting at sourcing, if we're talking about your average uh, steak that you buy at a supermarket, where did that steak come from? We know it came from a cow, um, at least here in the States, most of the time it's coming from a cow. Uh, where did that cow come from? What did that cow eat? And what kind of uh, environment did that cow live in? are all factors that dictate the quality of that steak, right? It's hard to argue that um, you are essentially what you digest and you are what your food digested. And I think it's easy to see that with an animal, when you're eating their flesh, you're eating the things that they are made up of as well. And so considering that is probably advisable. I'm not here to tell you that you need to eat grass-fed, grass-finished steaks, um, but it is something to consider moving forward. Okay, um, so the feed that you're getting, the livestock, that matters, right? Uh, if we're looking at sourcing their, the feed of the soil, so if you're eating any sort of uh, produce, right, stuff that you get um, from the vegetable or fruit aisle, those things are grown through soil, and the quality of that soil matters. A lot of farms are monocropping, which is a phrase meaning that uh, people are, are putting the same thing on the same soil over and over and over, season after season after season, and eventually that soil loses its nutrient value. Problems, right? Okay, sourcing, if we're looking at the chemicals that are used to make this thing, you know, fungicides, herbicides, pesticides, things like Roundup are, are chemicals that make their way into your food, antibiotics. Okay, um, the distance that this calorie has to travel is something to consider. If you're buying a steak but it's coming from Australia, you have to, you have to know that it's likely been frozen. And uh, for some folks, that's um, a reason enough not to buy that steak because it's likely a more expensive one. Um, and if you're going to be investing money into steaks, you probably don't want to have them having been frozen ahead of time. Okay, um, things like, all right, so if we're going back to the basic thing, quality, preparation, okay? The preparation of your food. Most people don't actually prepare a lot of their calories anymore. Um, I myself find it very appealing to go out to the supermarket, I'm sorry, to, uh, yeah, to the supermarket and go to the prepared food section or, or eating out at restaurants, um, meal delivery services. All of these things rob you actually of the actual work of preparing your food and they takes you away from the experience of really being with what you're about to eat. Um, not to mention you have no control over what kind of environment it was stored in um, or what kind of cooking practices were used to make it. Uh, things like very cheap uh, oils make their ways into a lot of the things that you eat when you're eating out and you have really no say. Next, um, if we're actually cooking at home, um, the benefit of being able to cook at home is that you get a chance to actually make all of those decisions for yourself. The manufacturing process of that calorie. I, I don't think a lot of people are familiar with the idea that around the edges of the supermarket is where you get whole foods and in the middle of the supermarket is where you usually buy groceries and those groceries are often in paper boxes and plastic packaging. And those calories had to go through a lot of manufacturing to make its way into those shelves and staying good on those shelves for extended periods of time. Um, anything that can last for a while uh, without refrigeration is 
likely used uh, some sort of preservative is being used to keep it there and um, I'm not sure that you're gonna digest that preservative very well all right lastly ingestion to digestion we have two major sections set and setting set is the mindset that you have while eating the quality of your food and how you actually take it in into your being uh, requires you to hopefully be at least aware of the fact that you are chewing and you are swallowing and you are bringing in life into your body. If you're um, pissed at yourself for eating this slice of pizza, it is more likely to give you indigestion. All right, setting. When eating, community is useful. Being with other folks lowers down stress hormones and allows you to actually rest and digest. Getting into a nervous system state state that actually uh, allows you to take in the nourishment. All right, so food quality, super interesting topic. We'll talk about it for days, as you can tell. Next time we talk, we're gonna dig into macronutrients where we're gonna really understand what is a protein, what is a carb, and what is a fat. Thank you for listening. Have a good week. Bye.